Hi friends, it is a gorgeous 67 degrees today. I was not planning on getting outside and working in the garden, but it's beautiful. I mean, blue skies, warm weather, there's just a nice little breeze, so I can't say no to that. So I am out here in the vegetable garden. I thought I'd give you a quick tour on layout of the vegetable garden, and then I need to go in there and do a lot of cutback and clean up, take care of some of the plants I've left over from last fall. I need to clean back my asparagus, prune my raspberries, my blackberries, a few other things. So I thought I'd take you along for that. I've got all my supplies gathered, so I'm ready to get going. So this is our vegetable garden. We broke ground on this last June. We have a, had a pretty big slope to the yard and kind of leveled it a little bit. It still has a slope to it for drainage, but level enough that we are able to put our raised beds in. It's about 36 by 76. So it's quite large. We have 22 raised beds in there. Most of them I will show you are four by, let's see, we have 12 beds that are four by six. And then we have 10 beds that are uh, right here. These are four by 12 with four foot walkways all in between. So we put this in last June. We did about half the beds over the summer and then finished up in September, getting the landscape fabric laid and finishing the fencing. We are waiting to stain the fence before we put the gravel down, just so we don't get any stain over spray. And we are waiting to stain the fence because my husband is still working on the arbor over the entrance, the main entrance. He built this for me and we just finished up the side panels uh, this weekend and he has the top bar cross pieces but he's going to stain those first before putting them on top and then we are going to stain the whole fence it's going to be stained black and it's a pretty traditional like country three rail fence so i think it's going to look really nice once it's all stained and you can see we have this lovely red clay soil here it is just it is just a mess. So until we could get the walkway finished, we just threw down these mats to try and cut down on some of the clay getting into the garden, but it's definitely still there. So I will go take you around and show you what we have. We put in irrigation last summer. So we had all of this installed. So every bed in here is on its own drip irrigation and we have the ability to turn them on and off which has been really nice, especially when we don't have all of them planted up. So after we stain the fence, the next step is to put down the gravel, which we already have purchased. We just are waiting to stain so that we don't get overspray on the gravel. And it's really coming together. I mean, there's still a long way to go on this garden in particular, but I mean, the whole property has a lot to go. I'm just thrilled with how it's turned out so far. I'm debating what I'm gonna grow over my arbor here. If you have any ideas, let me know. We do have pretty good deer pressure because I originally wanted to do a climbing rose and I'm not, I'm not against trying it and just, <laughs> I've used a ton of deer repellent since we have lived here and that seems to be working pretty well as long as I stay up on it. So I'm not opposed to putting a climb, climbing rose up here and just having to spray it frequently. But I also saw a really cool idea um, on Robbie with Visit Our Gardens channel on YouTube. He, they were touring a garden and I wish I could remember which garden it was, but at this, it was a garden center. They had a weeping Ala uh, blue Alaskan cedar. I believe that's what it was. And they grew it up on an arbor and just let it like weep down. And it was so beautiful. If I can find a picture of it, I will put it up here. But so I was thinking about doing something like that and then maybe some clematis with it until it grows because I know they're pretty slow growing. So I welcome ideas though or suggestions. So my plan for the garden this year is to have a lot of cut flowers in here, but I also have a good amount of vegetables and some fruits are raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. Last year I grew a lot of watermelon and cantaloupe, which my kids absolutely enjoyed. They were delicious. So I plan on growing a lot more um, melons this year. Right now it is looking pretty, pretty dead. <laughs> 
So I also have plans to surround the outside of the garden with some cut flowers. I already have back on this back side, I have some peonies planted along this fence. I plan to do this whole 36 foot um, fence line, cover that with peonies. So that'll be, I think, really beautiful in the long run. And I, I love peonies just for their um, fragrance and their look, but also I just want to be able to cut on them. So I figured back here, it won't bother me as much to cut them. They're not going to be like a structural part of the landscaping. I do want to put an arbor over this back entrance at some point, and then I'm going to do a gravel path to the shed. And around that right side of the shed over there, I do want to put in a little potting area. Eventually, there's going to be um, gardens around the shed, and we are going to paint the shed the same color as the house, which we are hoping to paint, paint the house this spring as well. Nothing against the green, it's just not my thing. So on this side of the vegetable garden, on the outside, I plan to put all my dahlias. I have ordered way too many dahlias this year. <laughs> and I'm also starting some from seed, which I've never done dahlias from seed. I've heard that they're really easy. I did get two different varieties of the floret dahlias. So I'm eager to see which varieties I get from those. On the front side of the vegetable garden here on the fence line, I am gonna grow my sweet peas this spring. I am thinking I'm gonna put some of my cut roses along this fence line. But like I said before, we do have a lot of deer pressure, so it's probably not a great idea, but I'm kind of like a, well, I'll try it and see what happens. And then if I have to move them, I have to move them. But I think it would be really nice to have this just all of my roses for cutting along this fence line. Over here we had all of our greens, lettuces, and we pretty much harvested off of the, these all winter long. We would just cover them with frost cloth if it was getting anything you know too low below 30 degrees and now everything is very overgrown. I made the mistake of not succession planting all my greens, which I highly advise if you do. We were just so eager to get stuff in the ground last fall that I just put all my greens out. And so everything was ready all at the exact same time. So my spinach has now gone bitter. My arugula is way overgrown. So I need to just cut all this back and I'm gonna uh, direct those some new lettuces and spinaches in the next couple days. Over here I have some broccoli, just small little starts. So hopefully the broccoli starts putting on some size pretty soon. Over here is where I had peppers last year. I just never pulled my pepper plants out, which I need to do. So these are all just old peppers. And then in this bed I have my garlic that I fall planted. And then more garlic over here. We eat a lot of garlic. So I am excited this year to have a big crop of garlic. This bed is primarily herbs. And so for winter, really the only thing in here is my perennial thyme and oregano, rosemary. And then I did throw down some cilantro that has managed to survive the entire winter, which is really surprising because we had some single digit nights. These are some old sugar snap peas that need to be cleaned out. So this is our strawberry bed. My son is obsessed with growing strawberries. So half the bed is his. He insists that he wants half of it and he wants to take care of it completely. So he takes care of this whole side. He comes out and weeds and takes care of it all of himself. It's just precious. And then we have, these are just a little bit more mature strawberry plants. Most of our varieties, I think all I have are Seascape, Ozark, and Tribute. This bed is full of carrots that are in desperate need of harvesting. Just time got away from us and we have not harvested them. They are, probably a few of them are split and a little fibery past their peak, but we pulled up some the other night and a few of them were still quite delicious. I had some extra tulips left over from planting. So I threw some tulips in this whole entire bed. It's just so exciting to see the little life coming up. 
fall is green and this is just going to be a mix of i mean there are purples and pinks and whites and reds and yellows i just grabbed a bunch of clearance tulip bulbs and so i don't even remember what most of these are i don't think i even put labels down so i'm excited to have these for cutting in the spring this is our blackberry bed i just have three in here right now we have Heaven Can Wait, Blackberry, Sweetie Pie, and Prime Arc. So on the to-do list for this spring is to build supports for both my raspberries and these blackberries. So that's to come. Obviously, forgot to clean up here a little bit. And you can see I had even more extra tulips I threw in here. And here is a lovely garden fail. I tossed these in here as an afterthought because I had a few extra that I didn't have a place for. And you know, I came from a place where the ground doesn't totally freeze. And here we definitely experienced the freeze thaw cycles. So lesson learned, my ceramic pot split after like our first freeze thaw. So after these bloom, I will be tossing that. But from this side, it's still pretty. Just got a little dirt on it <laughs> so i just threw those in there uh, to overwinter them so they'd get their cold uh, chill hours but i'll put them on my porch once they start budding up over here is my blueberry bed and you cannot see i'm noticing on camera and because blueberries thrive in acidic soil they are in this bed by themselves so that we can just continually amend with sulfur to help lower the pH of the beds here. And then I topped them with pine bark. So as the pine bark uh, breaks down, it helps contribute to um, lowering the pH. And I'm so excited, they're already budding up. I don't, I don't know if you can tell, stop focusing, but they are just oh, signs of life, signs of spring. So we have, right now I only have six blueberry plants in here. Looking forward to just adding to this over the years. And then over here is our raspberry bed. And like I said, we need to build a support this season for it. They were so tiny and immature last year, and we just got a couple handfuls of berries off of them. So I really didn't bother building supports, but that is on the to-do list this year. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six different plants, but the way that raspberries grow and multiply, sending their underground runners, I am sure this bed will be full of raspberries very soon. So we have the Caroline variety, Nova, Anne, which is a gold raspberry, and then fall gold. So two fall, two gold raspberries, and then two varieties of red raspberry. And last year, these Caroline raspberries were the favorite of all my kids. And then, try not to make you dizzy. That brings us to this bed, which is currently our asparagus bed. So you can see, I let all the asparagus die back this fall. And so I need to get in there and cut it all back. It was a first year. I planted it by, um, from crowns last year. So we didn't harvest anything on it this year. You don't want to harvest on your asparagus. Generally, the, definitely the first year. Sometimes it said the first two years. I will probably harvest a little bit on it this year. I just won't harvest heavily on it. So I need to cut back the asparagus. There's a few weeds in there too. So that's on the list for today. And you can see there's just so much like just debris in here that I need to clean up. So I am gonna get started. I'll set up the camera and get to work. Got all my tools. Now it's time to get busy. So while I'm over here with my raspberries and about to cut them back, I thought I'd go over a little bit about pruning raspberries. So pruning raspberries can get kind of complicated. So I'm gonna try and simplify it for you. There are primocanes and floricanes that 
are on raspberries. Basically, all that means is the stem, the cane, they are either prima, primo canes, which is its first year, or floor canes, which is in its second year. So if you think of it as first year and second year, sometimes that helps. But with all the raspberries that I have, these are all ever ever bearing raspberries, which means they will fruit, bloom and fruit on both new and second year wood. So you can tell by this one, it was a primo cane last year. It fruited at the tip of its cane. You can kind of see right here, those are old raspberry buds. So with that, I will come in and I will cut this back to the first healthy bud and then it will produce more fruit lower down on this cane. So this year, this primo cane will be a flora cane because it will be in its second year. Now, any canes that come up from the ground this first year will be primo canes and they can fruit and flower on that this first year. That's the benefit of ever bearing raspberries. So I'm just gonna come in here and just cut back. I'll show you up close. I'm just gonna cut back last year's little buds. And other than that, there's really not much else I need to do. Now, some people recommend, or some people to simplify it even more, just say you cut them all the way back to the ground, which you can absolutely do. You're just gonna get the fruit from the flush of growth that comes up for that year. So this gives you a little bit more fruit because you are gonna be able to set those, um, set the blooms and fruit on last year's growth on those floor canes. So I hope that kind of simplifies it. I'll walk you through it as I'm doing it right now. So for example, let's take this cane right here and looking at it, you can tell very easily that this one fruited at the tip. So it's not gonna fruit anything beyond that. I could just cut it all the way back to the ground and let a new primo cane come up to fruit, but I wanna get um, a bigger yield. So I want it to set fruit on these other branches or on the um, lower down on the cane. So you can see there are viable buds that are already swelling. So I'm just gonna cut it back to the first viable bud, which looks like it's right about here. So that's all I need to do. Now, next year, once this fruits at the end of the season, this one will be done and I can cut this branch all the way back to the bottom. The other thing you wanna do, my raspberry patch is only in its like first year. Last year was its first year. So this will just be its second season. So I don't have really any floor canes to cut out. So everything I had last year was a prima cane, but if they were floor canes, you would wanna cut those all the way to the bottom. The other thing you wanna look for is any diseased, damaged, or dead branches. So you can see along here, I can go in here and cut these off just to clean it up because these are all dead. Now, if there are any dead branches down here, this one actually looks like it has some life in it, so I won't cut that out. But if any of these canes were completely dead, go ahead and cut those out. You can kind of see this one here. It looks actually, the first viable bud looks like it's all the way down here. Oop, no, that whole thing, that actually is completely dead. So this one I will take back all the way to the bottom. So that's all you have to do. And if you're in doubt, just the easiest thing to do is to cut them all the way back down to the ground and you will at least get um, one set of fruit on your plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of these. Now these I already cut back last fall because they were, trans they were in pots for a little bit of the season and I transplanted them last winter. Well, I should say last fall, early winter. And so I went ahead and cut them back when I was transplanting them. So I don't really have anything to cut back on them. So that's it for raspberry pruning and cleanup. Now we just filled these beds last year with a really good raised bed mix that had, was amended with compost. And these beds do not have landscape fabric under them, so they go down to the native soil. So this soil is really, right now it's really healthy, it's really rich. 
I'm not gonna amend it or top dress it with any compost this season. Probably next year I will start adding a top dressing of compost, but I think it's still got a lot of good nutrients in it. I will come in and throw down a little berry tone fertilizer. You could also use holly tone. Holly tone is really good for any of the berries um, or even just like a, any vegetable garden fertilizer. So I will do that later this spring. Right now I'm just focusing on cleanup, but probably in a few weeks I will come in and start fertilizing these. So now I'm at my blackberries. Blackberries similar to raspberries are, they have primocanes and floricanes, just like we talked about with raspberries. Typically most blackberries uh, only bloom and fruit on the floricane. I do have one variety, the prime arc, which I just got at the end of the season last year. And this one actually will fruit on both primocanes and floricanes. So this one, is pruned the same way as I prune the raspberries. If I had any fruit set from last year, I would just prune the tip of that off. Otherwise I leave the branches so that they can fruit in their second year. Now I purchased this Primark blackberry at the end of the season last year. So I did not have any blackberries on this one. And my other two varieties are Sweetie Pie and Heaven Can Wait. And both of those only fruit on the Floricane. So I didn't get any fruit on them this year. I will, or last year, I will this year. So I'm just gonna go in and look for any diseased, dead, dying branches, anything like that, cut that off. And then I will leave everything else so that this year it can set fruit. So in future years, once they have fruited for the first time, I will prune them differently. I will just cut the second year growth back to the ground. The first year growth I will leave and that will become next year's fruit set. So that's the only caveat. So pretty much today, I'm not gonna cut anything other than dead um, branches out. Can you see all of these buds? Oh my goodness, it has budded out so much already. It's incredible. So the other thing to keep in mind when you're doing any pruning, especially for any type of edible plant or, or fruit, is you wanna keep airflow in mind. So if you have any branches on the inside that are crossing over, that could potentially damage each other or impact air, and light flow to the whole plant. You wanna cut those out. And then of course your diseased or dead branches. I just thought that was so cool how much it's already budded out. Now this is my mint. So if you aren't aware, never ever ever grow mint in the ground. I mean, shouldn't say never, everyone can do what they're entitled to, but highly recommend it that you do not grow mint in the ground because it is incredibly invasive and will take over. So if you can, grow your mint in a pot. And mint is, I mean, it's basically a weed. There is not much I could do to this plant that would hurt it. I love having fresh mint for mojitos in the summer.
So you can already see the new mint is already starting to grow and green up. So I am just cutting back all the dead stuff. And I cut mine back um, in the summer as well. When it starts to get a little woody and sparse, I will cut it back and it'll just flush right back out. What is it? Um, the Chelsea chop that some people do where you cut like half of the plant completely back so that that will flush back out and then you can harvest from this side. And then once this one flushes back out, chop down the other side. So it flushes out with new growth. But I'm just gonna remove any leaves or debris in here. These were sugar snap peas last fall. And I am excited because in the next couple of days I will direct sow some more peas for a spring crop. So last year I grew ground cherries for the first time just to try them and they dropped seed prolifically like we could not get out here and harvest them fast enough it didn't help that we didn't really care for the flavor very much so they have dropped seed you can see this all over I am sure oh here's a big one can you see that? All those seeds. I'm sure this entire bed is going to be covered in volunteer ground cherries this spring. So that's going to be fun to pull out. I'll probably keep one just to grow again because they're so pretty um, for like our flower arrangements. But I just really did not care for the flavor. Have you ever tried one? So my girls join me in the garden because we are going to harvest these carrots. So I thought I'd get their help because they have been eager to pull all the carrots. You girls ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah. here's your bowl. Let's put them in here. Okay. And let's take turns. Can I go first? Yeah. Got, that one no, is, it's, whoa, it's just got split again. Yeah. Come on, A lot of them are past their oh. peak, so they're going to be split. It can't, it's not ready. It is, you just gotta pull hard. Can you pull hard? Yeah. With your both hands, Eve. Try it. There you go. Oh, good job. Look at that pretty big carrot. <laughs> All right. It's pretty big. You can just put the bowl in the bed and you guys both can just start pulling. Oh, okay. Here, why don't you pull, put this. Maybe. Here, put it right here. And just, <laughs> let me see, what'd you get? Oh my goodness. That carrot's crazy. You got a clump of dirt. Oh, that's a little cute guy. Yeah. There's some pretty that's ones in there. there. Oh, there's one. Try, and <laughs> try and shake some of the dirt off. Uh, shake, Leave shake, the dirt. Shake, shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Can I pull? Yeah, pull them pull off. Shake, 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 shake. Pull off. You can pull. Um, no. <laughs> I got a big clump of it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. It's not coming off. You just got to brush yeah, it off. It's small as carrots. So this variety on this side is Bolero, and we definitely prefer the flavor of the Bolero.
look at all of these carrots. Yes, sure. We've got a lot of washing to do, don't we? Yep. Let me see your hands. And a lot of eating to do. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wee. Woof. Was that fun? Yes. Do you want to grow more carrots? Yes. Yes. So we can pull all the I was out here I thought I'd give you an update on some of our winter sewing took a peek in a few of the containers and let's see this one is the marshmallow yarrow there are definitely some seedlings in there oh and the lupin look at that oh that's awesome got some in here too what is this one? Oh, more lupin this is the governor Got some hollyhock that has sprouted. And this container has some corn flour, which makes an awesome cut flour. I'm really excited for these. So that's a wrap on today's garden cleanup. I am losing some daylight. I need to go in and start dinner. I got pretty much everything I needed to get done today. The next couple days, I'm gonna start direct sowing some of my cool season crops. So follow along if you'd like to see that. I really appreciate you watching and thanks for gardening with me today.